lots of hatred, lots of secrets, lots of romance, the devil or not, the hell or not. I got nightmares in my head, I fear, that the thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space Sleep, Monaj. Tomorrow is a big day for you. I spoke and smicked, knowing that upcoming day will be brutal. Chapter 5 Wine. With tears in my eyes, I was looking at my reflection in the mirror. Hair open, baby, light makeup to enhance my natural beauty. The white gown, which is a dream of every woman, a fishtail gown hugging my curves for its dear life. A diamond necklace, a veil, everything was perfect to look like a bride. To look like a bride. But an important thing was missing. The happiness of the bride, the smile, the satisfaction, but was taken over by tears and painful tears. I was ready to be the bride of an unknown person whom I don't even know. My cruel aunt, who took care of me after my parents died, fixed my marriage with a man I never met because she borrowed money from him and can't pay back now. So she made a deal. She sold me. He is a brutal man. This is not what I wanted. I have dreams to accomplish. After I moved out of my aunt's house at the age of 18, I thought, I'm free and I can live my life. But no, the time was crucial, but I survived. But not for this. She kept on me for 18 years just to get the amount the government paid for me and then kicked me out. I don't want to marry him. God, please, fallen angel, please save me. Somebody save me. Rescue me, please. I was in my haste and tears were rolling down my cheeks until the door opened. I looked through my mirror and there stands my wicked aunt, who used me for her own good and is now selling me to some criminal. She came near me and spoke. Keep your tears for after your marriage because the man outside is an animal and you will have to be his prey. She ended and laughed. Now stop your drama and come outside. She forced her thumb and index on the corner of my lip, forcing me to smile. I took a shaky breath and forced myself to stay calm. The doors opened. I stepped on a red carpet with my shaky legs, holding a bouquet of pink roses in my hands. My veil was down and the tears were building up in my eyes. I forced them in and took a shaky breath in, suppressing myself. I walked down the aisle. I was standing in front of the man I was going to marry. A tear made its way down my cheek, which didn't go unnoticed by the man. He grabbed my arm in a bruising grip, making me startle and whispered something in my ear. Stop your drama or the consequences won't be good tonight. He whispered and backed away. I again took a shaky breath in. I feel so helpless, so cowardly. Why does God do this to me? Why me? Why does it have to be me? And I... Am I that unlucky to have true love in my life? I don't want this. I tried to run away, but this man caught me and threatened me by making a deep cut on my arm. I'm scared. The priest started to pronounce the woes. As he was saying the woes, my breathing was pacing up. I felt a need for oxygen. My lungs were contracting. My brain was stopping. But then a deep voice broke the trance and the priest stopped. I sucked in a huge lump of air in my mouth. I was quivering, but I was grateful that this undesirable thing came to a halt at least. I looked around and saw a bulk of men in black surrounded the whole place. They are pointing guns at the other guards of the man I was supposed to marry. Are my prayers being answered? Ha has God sent an angel to save me from this monster? I don't care who it is, but he is my savior. A man dressed in black came. He was head to toe black. Black cap, black mask, black coat, black tie, black shirt, black pants and black shoes. He was intimidating. Is he going to a funeral? Or coming from a funeral, I thought. Chapter 6 Jungkook dismissed the wedding, I wrote. The actions came to a halt and everyone looked in the direction of the voice I quote. Of course me, taking long strides on the red carpet lying in the hall, my steps came to a halt. When I came in front of my most awaited enemy, Wine, who was looking at me, may have recognized me or not. Backed away a few steps, now I was facing Stark. Who the are you? He barked. I put my index on my ear and scrunched my eyes in a satirical manner. 
Oof, easy man, easy, I spoke calmly. Gods, he barked again, but now it's no use. Everyone is under my control, devil's control. Hi there, I said. Hi, my foot, get out of here. He spoke and kind of pushed me and grabbed Vine's arm to which she winced in pain. I saw his knuckles turning white and Vine trying to get out of his hold but failed miserably. Anger rushed in my veins and I held his wrist in a bone-crushing hold. He groaned, he left Vine's arm and she immediately hid behind me. I can hear her low sobs, which she was trying to suppress, but no use. I held Stark's fingers, from which he was holding wine, and twisted a crack sound, and he screamed his lungs out. That was satisfying. He backed away. Crouching, holding his broken fingers, he opened his nasty mouth. Who are you? I chuckled. I tilted my head and spoke. You was truly that. The corner of my lips, calling upwards, watching the fear building up in his eyes. What have I done to you? He asked. Well, that's a good question, first you think about stealing something from my territory, then you send a man to my territory, then abused Marune. Then you try to think of what's mine. I spoke revolving around him, and then the last sentence, looking straight in mine's eyes, he touched Marune. I held his jaw tightly. He tried to make a stunt using his gun, but failed. Bad. Very bad. Humans have two eyes, but the devil has three. I spoke, looking straight in his eyes. The devil, he stuttered. Yes, you're truly that. I spoke. Please leave me, he pleaded. Please forgive me, devil. I won't do that again, and you can take wine as well. Please leave me, he pleaded. I don't take commands, and why would I ask you when she is already mine? And about forgiveness, you know well the devil never forgives. I spoke with my bloodshot eyes and threw him on the ground. I took out my gun and shot him right in between his eyes, ignoring his pleadings. Never leave a traitor. I looked over to Wine, and she was scared to death, the sweat on her forehead. Everything was e uneven. She was not in her right mind. I walked towards her and diverted her gaze from ground to me. I was moving further, and she was backing away. She was about to fall when I caught her. She looked me in the eyes and whispered, Fallen angel. I chuckled and spoke. Fallen angel? Let's go, Marin. No, she spoke. I won't marry you, she added, and got out of my hold. I smacked. Either marry me or the priest will die, I spoke, pointing my gun to the priest. She was taken aback. I will count till five. No, you can't force me, she shouted. One, I spoke. No, stop this, she pleaded with tears in her eyes, making my heart clench. Two, I continued counting, and she kept on pleading. Three, four. I loaded my gun and turned my head to the terrified priest. I will, I will, I will. I smacked and looked at her. I went near her and wiped her tears on her cheeks with the pad of my thumb. She jacked my hand away. Stay calm, Munaj. The priest started, and I can see wine again panicking. Cut the crap. I roared at the priest, to which wine flinched. The marriage was done, and we exchanged the rings. Luca gave me the ring box, when I, which I customized for her. A huge red diamond now resting on her finger. She put the ring on me with her shaky and cold hands. I know she's scared, but she has to marry me, the devil. Now you may kiss the bride, priest spoke. I put my mask down a bit and gave a quick peck on her forehead. She shivered by just mere touch. I pulled her out of the hall towards my car. Stark's men will join me because they have no other option. And about her aunt, she will get her treatment in my basement. And guest, they were no guest, smooth as it is. Now it's time to take my queen to her new home. Chapter 9 Jungkook, on the way back home, she was utterly quiet. Her hands were trembling. I had to force her because... If I don't, there are problems ready to capture her. Stark has to be dead, and that with my own bloody hands. Traitor have no place in my world. The deceiver will die his own death, and that the worst one. Stark used to be in my circle before. He knew my real identity, yet deceived me. He was a greedy man. He took money from my rivals to disclose some of my security secrets. Yet he did not disclose my identity, but he became a threat. He thought I couldn't see his tricks where I was the one letting him play. But then I got the news of him getting married to my baby girl. He crossed the line. I can't see wine crying in pain. Stark was none less than a monster.
I'm the devil, but I don't play with innocent girls. He would have made Vine's life hell if by any chance she married him. I can't let my baby suffer. She is mine, mine to tame, mine to seek, mine to listen to, mine to love. Her wicked old aunt, who could not pay off her debt, wanted to sacrifice Vine. This made my blood boil. I would have put a bullet in her skull if Vine was not there. She is innocent. I have to keep her to myself, because if I let her and her aunt free, her aunt would have done something like that again. I wanted to save her. I can burn the wall down for her. Marrying her was nothing. She will be safe in front of my eyes. I gave her some water to drink, to which she flinched when I brought the bottle in front of her. I know she is scared, but she will be fine. I hope she will be fine. No words exchanged. No conversation was made. The beginning of love, of hatred. The obsession started showing its effect. Will it change in law? Will Vine be able to recognize him? Will she be able to love him? Will she accept him? How will their first wedding night be? Will he force her? Will he tame her, as he said? Will his beast take over and ruin Vine? To know until next part to be continued. Love you all. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and also share.